Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Drama Club. On this week's episode, we've got two messages for Demi Lovato. First and foremost, get well soon, girl. Second and second most, I want to say. <laughs> Enjoy Mackin' on GEZ. You deserve it. And in our main topic, we've got the story of Tanya Harding. Never an ice princess, but definitely an ice a drama queen. All this drama and more on this week's Drama Club. Stay tuned. What up, fam? What up, fam? It's good, y'all. Feels good, right? Feels good, right? <laughs> yeah, I know it, dude. I know yeah. it, dude. And without further ado, we broadcast some live from CA to NY. <laughs> One time when we were coming home from Vegas, May was really tired and driving and she didn't want to drive. But I think she didn't want to ask me to drive. <laughs> and then I farted in her car and then she started crying. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give more context than that i mean like, what <laughs> what else is there to say the, because it wasn't it wasn't that i was just i, I wasn't emotional or anything. it wasn't an emotional cry and it yes, wasn't it was no and it yes, wasn't it was no and it wasn't that the that the fart smelled bad or anything but i was just nauseous it, gr- <laughs> it made my eyes water <laughs> shut up you started crying over a fart. <laughs> You're definitely not woke. <laughs> All right, too woke. I don't know, dude. I th- I think we could be woke. We're I think we're woke in our private lives. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I lean I lean woke. Remember? <laughs> yeah, that's how I, I feel about that. I'm always like coming off of a a light nap. Like I'm. A, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm woke adjacent. I took a nap on on monday this week and and then Noel came home from the gym and he woke me up and i was all pissed off at him oh no i was like because he said he walked in and he was like you're sleeping and like really loud and like that yeah. fucking woke me up so then i was like you're mean that's a mean way to wake me up wait monday so that was after like your birthday so yeah so i was all no, tired yeah no. and then i worked all day fuck that no whatever we're we're about that nap life nap life hashtag nap life hashtag nap time <laughs> nappy naps so anyway my name is may my name is stephanie <laughs> <laughs> okay and we're the drama club <laughs> this is the podcast all about celebrity scandals juicy gossip mob wives butt stuff um <laughs> <laughs> naps naps yeah all kinds of shit I haven't gotten a chance to listen to the Fergie episode. Oh, you haven't? No. Oh, it's funny. Okay, cool. Fergie's a fucking mess. I like uh, the the pictures you posted of her with with Diana. Yeah, her red hair, those bangs. Yeah. Diana, that little sweater you liked? Yeah, hell yeah, style goals. The little little sheep. Let's hope you think of the first rule of good sportsmanship. Play fair. My dad is really good at making nicknames. Like the other day, Bruno got shaved and they left his ears too long. And then he ca- he called him Einstein for like a week. Yeah. <laughs> and I was dying. He's always good at that, but he's never given me one. What the fuck? My mom has been calling Lenny Frijolito for like a couple Aww. of months. And I was like, why? He's white. <laughs> Aw, there's frijoles hueros. Yeah, but we fuck with black beans. Yeah, so do all Central Americans, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so weird. Like when I go to Hoel's grandma's house and she makes like pinto beans, and they're yeah. always like, like Mexicans make them like kind of like watery. Like they're, it's yeah. the whole bean, but mm-hmm. it's watery. Yeah. yeah. I'm like what the fuck? No. Can we mash this shit up? What's <laughs> going on? Throw some, fuck, <laughs> throw some fucking lard and some white rice. Let's get some casamiento going. There you go. It's black beans are bust, baby. Yeah, dude. That's all I ever eat. That's I why. I f- that's why I fuck with Cubans. Me too. That's why I like Cuban food also. Yeah. And their black beans are watery, but they're delicious. Hell yeah. 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 I, um, I could make a whole little like comic book about the the life of a frijole in the in the, my family's house. Because at first my mom starts off with like the whole the whole bean Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. what we eat on like Monday, you know, and then on Tuesday she mashes them a little bit and then on Wednesday she like fucking straight up 
refries them. And then on Thursday, they're fucking throw some rice in that shit. It's casamiento. Hell yeah. And by Friday, it's like the thick ass refried casamiento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best. Dude, it's lit. This is a welcome to our new podcast, the Frijoles Podcast, <laughs> in which we discuss <laughs> all the several ways that we eat frijoles. <laughs> Remember when Nan was like, I've been eating beans. Me and you looked at each other like, like <laughs> bitch, <laughs> I've been eating beans every day since I was fucking born. <laughs> we were at brunch and I was yeah. like, I had beans this morning. <laughs> I have beans fucking every day of my goddamn life. Yeah. I don't think my mom ever gave me milk in a bottle. I think she just put some fucking watery frijoles in that shit. Agua de frijol. That's all I ever fucking ate. Sopa de frijol. <laughs> oh, shout out to Nani. <laughs> Let's talk about the big news this week. Mm -hmm. Demi Lovato had a heroin overdose while on a weekend binger with her friends and is hospitalized. Hey, I thought that... Uh, they were TMZ was walking it back. It's that we don't know if it's heroin. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. We're not confirming that it's heroin just yet. But they did use that Narcon, right? How do you say yeah. it? Uh, n naloxone or something, Narcan. Oh, okay. They did use that on her, but that that's for like any opioid, right? Y yeah, exactly. Like even like fucking like what like Xanax? No, that's not an opioid. Fentanyl? That's a, that's a benzodiazepine. Yeah, uh, fentanyl is an opioid. It's okay. the strongest one. Woo, thank God I knew one. <laughs> <laughs> so it could have been pills. Fucking crazy. I can't believe it. I thought I was shocked because I thought she was a cokehead. I thought she did coke and uh, drank alcohol. I thought she was an alcoholic and a cokehead. That was like her, like she's been really vocal about her struggles with sobriety, uh -huh. which I guess for a long time she's been a user of, like you said, coke and I think over user of alcohol. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, she even did like a little YouTube video about it. Like she's pretty vocal. Not to be a dick, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but her number one song on iTunes is a song called Sober. Oh, that's her new song, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it's the song that she admits where she's not sober anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, it, this song came out a few weeks ago and she admitted that she... That she's relapsed? not sober. Yeah, she relapsed, but she didn't say, I don't think she said specifically about what I had assumed it was alcohol. But then, do you remember? I think it was like last week I sent you a picture of her with G Easy. Yeah, they're macking, right? Yeah. Which honestly, I'm not mad at that because they're both single. So who cares? Why is that fucked up? He's a hella cokehead. Oh. Oh, that's right. He just got like, he was just like in jail for that, right? Or, he like, was? He got, yeah. Uh oh, like he got caught with coke and shit on tour. Oh wow. Okay. Well, yeah. So he, he be doing also. Coke. I'm not mad at her macking on G Easy. That fool's. He's cute. He is a very good looking man. Yeah. He looks like a fuck boy, but he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just hit it and quit it. Yeah, he's never. He's never fucking calling you back. That fool is never gonna remember your name. He's gonna act like he don't know you at a party. Right. But I mean, it's yeah. worth it. Give him. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah, your yeah. mac on, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you going to do? I mean, fucking men, right? Just blow, blow shit just, up? Just fucking, <laughs> fucking under his eye, am I right, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> Blessed be the fruit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked, I've talked about on this podcast before, uh, Crazy Days and Nights, my favorite celebrity gossip website. Yeah. And the dude there said maybe a month and a half ago that she would be, she's going to wrap up these like next couple of weeks of tour dates. Yeah. Cause she's on tour. Cause so she's like on her tour. dates have been canceled, right? Exactly. So he was saying like she's going to knock out these last like couple of weeks of tour dates and then she was going to go to rehab for like a month or like a 45 day treatment or something like that. And then cut to like a few weeks later, that song Sober came out. And then uh -huh. cut to a few weeks after that, she OD'd. And they said it was like, a, they're, like she's been bi partying like nonstop with her friends. Yeah. Okay, so I got some weird tea, dude. Ooh. So I like fuck with 
skateboarders I, yeah. i've always been attracted to skateboarders and like i always like still follow them i really like the way they dress too so like i mm. always follow that I'll, i follow a bunch of them anyways sean malto who's a professional mm-hmm. skateboarder and is on nike's uh skateboarding team is dating this girl danny vitali who is a professional dancer and she is demi lovato's choreographer for her fucking tour okay so the other day like because that dude, I followed that dude, Sean Malto, and he always posts stuff uh, like with her. And so I'll always like browse her page and shit. And I always see her posting pictures with Demi Lovato. So when all this broke, I was like, let me go check out that that uh, dancer's page. Well, she is getting like hella fucking hate from Demi Lovato's fans because everybody is blaming her for Demi's relapse. Is she a known partier or something? I mean, like, she, on her Instagram, like, she drinks and stuff. I mean, I don't know about, like, I mean, there's no way I I could tell if she does anything else. Right. But she doesn't appear to be sober or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But everybody kept pointing out to this tweet that she did, like, a year ago that was, like, the best form of uh, payback is revenge or something. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a few weeks ago, like, Demi Lovato's dance team just tweeted the word revenge. So then all these fucking little inner dweebs are, like, assuming that she, like, fucking has led her down this path, which I thought was wild. Like, right. It was totally unfounded and, like, absolutely not true, but, like, just a weird (laughs) connect that I found online. And could you imagine someone being so petty and such a horrible human being to have this long, like, plan, (laughs) apparently, to try to, like, get somebody to, I don't know. I know. Kids are stupid. That kind of shit only happens on House of Cards, you guys. (laughs) (laughs) This poor girl, she's just, like, a dancer. Yeah. Probably, like, like, really proud of herself for being able to choreograph a whole tour, and now she's getting fucking dragged. (laughs) Oh, no. I didn't realize Demi Lovato was so young. She's way younger than us. Yeah, she's, like, what, 25, 6? I think she's, like, 25. Yeah. Yeah, dude, she's been famous since she was a kid because she was on that, the Disney show. Mm-hmm. What what Disney show? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> I just know she was like on Disney. Yeah. That shit sucks. I hope everything works out. I do too. It's really awful. I felt really bad actually because <laughs> when it first came out, I posted those pic cuz when I think of heroin, I think of train spotting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I posted those pictures of train spotting and then I was like, "Oh, that's kind of fucked up." <laughs> but she was all right. They've like I mean, nobody's she's not in like any sort of critical condition it seems no it looks like they're just keeping her there for maybe more so for her own sake right so she don't have to deal with this shit i mean and i hope that she gets the help that she needs because this shit is hard for a regular schmegular person who works at best buy like imagine (laughs) yeah to do this in the public eye i oh no and imagine just like you're in the type of environment where you're never going to get away from that yeah you can't like i mean like who could you surround yourself with right that's going to be all, I mean, you just got to go full-blown granola and just mm-hmm. like, you know. You know, I always thought that it would be much harder to be, let's say, like an alcoholic than be like someone who's a hooked on addict. heroin. Yeah. Me too. Because like heroin, it seems like you could get away from that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like where if you really got away from it, you moved to a new city or something. Then where I'm you not gonna heroin find it? on the menu at the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. But yeah. alcohol for sure, that always seems like yeah, impossible seems- to me. And it's like, you know, you go to a work event, a work function, after hours work function or something, Christmas party or whatever. And like, it's just there. It's everywhere. Yeah. Fucking the supermarket. Everywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah. They don't go to heroin aisle at Vons. (laughs) They do at (laughs) Albertsons, though. (laughs) (laughs) Albertsons is the shadiest stuff. (laughs) Albertsons, your local drug dealer. (laughs) Actually, no, maybe not Albertsons, but like uh, Super King. Yeah. 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 One of those ghetto ass ones. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. John's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What would a good sport do? What would you do? Be angry and act up just because you've lost the game? Let's hope you'd remember good sportsmanship. Take the results well, no matter whether you win or lose. All right. So, May, you got a solo for us this week. I got a solo, which I'm really pumped about. Um, let's see. This this is one of those that when we decided to start the podcast, like, obviously, this is one of the first things that came to mind. 
Nice, nice. And so this week I'm doing Tanya Harding. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I got to come up with another sound. I was thinking of that the other day. <laughs> but I don't know what to do. <laughs> What's wrong with ooh, ooh? ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bring it real back. I was, hey, you put fucking Miami on the on the pre party playlist, and then I was like, let me check out Big Willie style real quick. Oh yeah, and then, <laughs> it's so funny because he really does do that on like every song. Hoo hoo, ha ha. I actually really, really, really like getting jiggy with it. Oh, getting jiggy with it was killing it. Yeah, hell yeah. Na 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 na. That's gonna be my next song. You want to do Tanya? Say it again. Say Tanya Harding and whatever. Okay. Nancy Kerrigan. All right, guys. I'm doing Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan. Na 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 na. <laughs> you know what? You know what noise I like? The from Funky Town. Boop 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 boop. boop. That's a good one. That's a yeah. banger. All right. This this story. I'm calling it you, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was fucking great okay obviously i watched i tanya again and i also rewatched the 30 for 30 documentary the price of gold which is really really good by the way maybe one of the best ones and i topped it all off with a little sprinkle of tanya harding's e true hollywood story hell yeah dude i okay here's the problem i've been obsessed with this story since i was a little kid so when I heard that they were making I, Tanya, I was like super pumped, especially because I like Margot, Margot Robbie, Robbie a lot. Yeah. yeah. Like, so I, I just feel like I, as much as I liked the movie, I did like the movie a lot. It just wasn't ugh, like I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. Really? Yeah. I just I think my expectations were just so fucking high, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't it's even all know what I wanted. from the perspective of her. Yeah. So you don't see like all the dirty on her, which is right. what is like you want to see. Yeah, exactly. And then another thing I think, like I was trying to think like when I first saw this movie, what was it that was like uh, a little bit off for me is that I felt like it was like it was trying to be a Coen Brothers movie. Yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and then I just kept thinking like, oh my God, if this was a Coen Brothers movie, like it would be so fucking good. But uh, when I rewatched it a couple days ago, actually, I liked it more. I and like I, it a lot. And I thought it was like on second glance, I thought it was like really, really great. And obviously, I like Allison Janney too. She's yeah, like, she's fucking boss. Yeah, she's fucking amazing. Her body is banging. She's like eighty million years old. Like, <laughs> I love her. Okay, so <clears throat> this is one of the most notorious sports stories in American history. So let's do the damn thing. Also, don't you stand for Joel Cohen and Francis McDormand? I do. Yeah, I do. And don't they have like a little adopted Ecuadorian son or something? Yes. Y yeah. If they yeah, ever I broke that. up, I would be pretty upset. Oh, love is dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Okay. Uh, again. <laughs> okay. So Tanya Maxine Harding was born in Portland, Oregon on November 12th, 1970. Her mother, Lavana was on something like her fourth kid and her fifth husband by the time that Tanya was born. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> America. America. And her mom, as we'll learn, is quite a character. Yes. Anyway, so, and what's up with the name Lavana? I don't know. Lavana. <laughs> yeah, that's, Lava it, like, if she was, a, like, a porn actress or something, her name would be, like, Lavana Love. Ooh. Ooh, I'm going to trademark that. Nobody steal that. <laughs> <laughs> just in Pop case i <laughs> in case i ever want to do porn lavana love is gonna be my name <laughs> anyway so tanya was a total daddy's girl and was super close to her dad who taught her about cars and hunting and shit so tanya was kind of a little bit of a tomboy when tanya was three years old she started figure skating which like what the fuck dude can kids even walk at three years old <laughs> Yeah, what was that? Like, she wanted to, right? Like, she was into it? Yeah, she wanted to. She just, like, saw the people. Because where they lived in Oregon, there was a skating rink, like, at the local mall. Yeah. So she would see them, and she just, like, and somebody got her hand-me-down uh, skates, and she just, like, got on the ice and did that shit. Yeah. So little baby Tanya's already fucking 
skating and smashing kneecaps of the other baby skaters. Oh, <laughs> At three years old, I was barely learning, uh, I don't know, how to eat casamiento on my own. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that always trips me out. <laughs> what, when babies do shit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, remember when Justin Bieber came out? They, he was like fucking playing the guitar at like two. Oh, really? Yeah, he's like that. Oh, no. That's, I, that, I don't want to think about Justin Bieber as a little tiny baby. And that's true. <laughs> oh, I heard he broke up with his pastor. His what? His pastor. Yeah, but what, what do you mean break up? You like, what? Like, they're not homies anymore. And they oh. were like attached at the hip for years. I heard some tea about that. I heard that like the reason or the people were speculating why uh, Bieber and the leader of that church broke church broke up and it's something about like selena gomez Ooh, like the pastor was trying to get at her after they broke up and he was like that's where i draw the line my dude oh shit yeah that's just crazy because you forget pastors can like date and shit huh yeah so okay so she took to it right away and she so impressed one of the prominent local coaches diane rollison that diane accepted taking her on as a pupil even though diane didn't ordinarily take on kids that young and diane would end up being her coach for pretty much the rest of her career by the time that she was six years old it was clear that tanya had something special like skating for her definitely wasn't going to be just some extracurricular activity but the problem was that skating is super expensive. Between ice time, coaches, costumes, and everything, it really adds up. Yeah. And her family was, like, beyond poor. Right. So sometimes she skated on an empty stomach because any money they had went towards her skating. That's her wild. That's crazy. Her, her dad actually uses the phrase trailer trash. Oh, her dad said that about them? Yeah, he was like, you know, people would call us trailer trash. We're, we're, I guess we're trailer trash. Imagine being like that and like being in that kind of a sport too. Like, yeah, hella don't fit in. Yeah, like, I wonder if there's if there's a Tanya Harding of polo, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so plus Tanya's mom, Lavana, was an abusive alcoholic. There was a confirmed account of someone witnessing her hitting Tanya repeatedly with a hairbrush. Also, Lavana believed that Tanya only performed well if someone was there to tell her that she couldn't do it. Right. So she was like super into negative reinforcement, which everyone knows doesn't work as well as positive reinforcement. Yeah. Come on, Lavana. You haven't seen that episode of Daria with the mice in the maze experiment? <laughs> <laughs> That's when she's teamed up with Kevin, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. you're fucking tripping girl and isn't britney teamed up with uh jane and then uh trent walks into her room and sees britney and he's like whoa uh, yeah <laughs> and it's like the most you ever hear out of him yeah <laughs> kevin was a nice guy he, he was, was a nice dumbass yeah. yeah he was harmless yeah exactly yeah <laughs> lavana would regularly call tanya fat and ugly fuck and this bitch according to tanya's dad was putting back a gallon of brandy a week oh shit <laughs> besides water imagine willfully drinking a gallon of any one thing a week no fuck that's <laughs> that's crazy. gross yeah. like you could have replaced brandy in that sentence with sunny delight and it would have been just as bad yeah seriously <laughs> and also what the fuck like who can take a gallon of cavassier to the dome like that so her dad wasn't an alcoholic? No, he was like hardworking dude, but it didn't work out between the mom and him. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, ended up taking off and like he lost his, he would send money until he lost his job and then he couldn't send money, but like they were always very close. Him and, and, and Tanya. Tanya. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. What do you think she was, what, what brand of uh, brandy do you think she was drinking it, something in a plastic bottle she, for sure <laughs> Ew. right yeah no come on uh i was thinking that one e and j oh yeah that's probably it that's disgusting yeah. <laughs> uh is presidente brandy yeah right is it i think it is yeah it is presidente and coke is fucking bomb presidente is good though <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> i'm true. not mad like if i drank that i wouldn't be mad at it dude could i drink a gallon of it though no <laughs> okay 
So Tanya dropped out of high school her sophomore year so that she could focus all of her attention on skating. Wow. So time goes on and Tanya is rising through the ranks of the skating world. By 1989, she came in third at the U.S. Figure Skating Championships. So she's 19. Yeah, she's 19. And she won the Skate America competition. Wow. So now people know who she is. She made a name for herself in skating. Right. Tanya met her future husband, Jeff Galuli, at the skating rink. Which, of course, because that's where she was all the fucking time. Yeah. And he became her first kiss, her first boyfriend, her first fucking everything. In March of 1990, she married him when she was 19. Oh, 19 cl- <laughs> my God. 19 Club. Oh, 19 my God. Club. Hardy. Well, the thing is, she essentially, she married him to get away from her mother. But then she didn't, right? Didn't they live with her mom? No. Oh, okay. Uh-uh. No, she got out. Oh, okay. However, Jeff was garbage pretty much from the jump. How old was he? I'm sorry. How old was was he? He was 22, I think. Okay. So he's pretty much the same age. Yeah. But I mean, at that age, though, that's that's kind of a big difference. difference. Yeah. And I think they I think they met when she was maybe 16 or 17 or something. Wow. Okay. So he would often hit her, which she associated with love because her mom, as we know, used to hit her. Right. So. Lavana really fucked her up, which is so sad. It's really sad. And it's weird because on the one hand, you've got this woman who's working her ass off so that Tanya can skate. But at the same time, she beats and degrades her. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. Imagine how that woman's mom must have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think she I think she says Lavana says something like that in I, Tanya and in one of the documentaries I saw of her where she was like, she was like, I'm a better mother than my mother. Yeah. 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 Yeah fucking weird but at some point at some to some degree like having your child be successful is beneficial to you too so she still doesn't take sure away, right like i mean yeah she did do a lot for her but maybe it was also partially for her own fucking sake yeah that's true yeah yeah but i feel like keep your money and ignore tanya if you hate her so much you know exactly <laughs> like, right yeah <laughs> i like that's horrible too but i think that tanya would have been better off true for sure All right, then came 1991, and you know things are about to get good because we hit the 90s. Yep. 1991, the world is bumping Nirvana's Nevermind, and and everyone is gladly paying $3 or whatever to go see Terminator 2 in the theater. (laughs) (laughs) I fuck with Terminator 2. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Is that the one they shot right here in Rancho? They shot Terminator 2 in Rancho? Yeah, at that fucking uh, big oil thing. That's like right here. What? Yes. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! Uh oh, now we gotta watch Terminator Two. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also fuck with Terminator Two because I think that Linda Hamilton's body is like banging in that movie. Like that's f- she's fitness goals for sure. Total Recall. <laughs> <laughs> that's a okay. That's the movie Total Recall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's it's nineteen ninety one. Right. I, I was three years old, and let me tell you, I sure shit could not skate. <laughs> <laughs> All I could do at this point was look really good in a hat. That's it. Like, <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Fuck. Tanya Harding had straight up started her career already. <laughs> Fucking bitch. But also she needed to. She needed to. That's true. She had to get out of that trailer. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It was a double wide though, I think. Oh, all right. right. (laughs) Tanya, okay. Do you remember do you remember being three at all? Because I don't remember being three. No, but I I want to tell you something. I just remember that on like Friday, somebody I thought that an I didn't realize that there was a difference between an R V and a mobile home. (laughs) Oh, like a mobile home is like a trailer. Yeah, I didn't know that. Did you know that? Yeah, I think so. I didn't fucking know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? It's like useless knowledge. <laughs> because you see those signs that say mobile home park. I thought that everybody it. just parked their RVs. Like, I thought that was like where their <laughs> RVs went. <laughs> those are where <laughs> RVs live. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've only seen RVs in like people's driveways and like the parking lot of like a Costco or something. Yeah. Anyways. 
Uh, do I remember anything when I was three? No, I don't remember anything no. when I was three. No, I was living in Huntington Park. Hey, <laughs> HP baby. <laughs> don't. I probably didn't know how to speak English yet. Uh huh. <laughs> and I don't know. That's all I fucking know just from like what my parents have told me <laughs> my mom was telling stories today about that i used to pee myself oh <laughs> yeah like all the time <laughs> no like she said when i was little like one time at an ikea <laughs> oh no <laughs> they girl. left me in like like the little kid section and then like yeah. on the on the overhead speakers it was like could you please pick up your daughter from <laughs> from the kids section <laughs> you peed in the ball pit i don't know but my oh, mom was like no. cracking up telling this story this morning anyways <laughs> so apparently i peed myself <laughs> i don't i don't remember v3 at all and i think my first memory is waking up on my fourth birthday because my grandma had my gift in a box on the bed and i opened it and it was alvin in the chipmunks pajamas oh <laughs> my god remember it the was alvin in the chipmunks christmas uh cd Oh, no, I hate that shit. What? I hate that shit. They would play that, like, uh, when I worked at AT&T. Like, in oh, the yeah. fucking... Yeah, no. Bullshit. On loop? Yeah, on a fucking loop. I hate that shit. <laughs> so, it was, like, Alvin and Chickpeas pajamas, but it was one of those, like, one-piece things with a long zipper, you know? Like, kind of like footy pajamas, but without feet. Yeah. It's probably, like, my favorite present I've ever gotten, like, <laughs> in my whole life. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember one time you and Tiff got me footy pajamas. And yeah, for your birthday. <laughs> yeah, and I really liked them, and they were, it, and it was cool because they really sexually confused and frustrated my boyfriend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> like he would get all mad because he was like, "I like this, but like, is that creepy?" You know. <laughs> 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 then, then he would also get all flustered and mad because there was no access to anything and taking it off was like a whole thing <laughs> oh my god it's sexy dude it's uh what is that called the anticipation yeah <laughs> dude oh, i just remembered last week uh when steph and i were hanging out we were in the car and she very randomly goes fuck p- and fuck the pyramids i was really drunk right <laughs> yeah <laughs> because i was trying to tell a story and it was like something about me you and and Hawal told me don't talk about him and i was like yeah fuck him <laughs> because fuck the pyramids like dude why like i would never ever since i seen the eiffel tower like i think like i'm never fucking going to, on a trip to see one of those fucking things ever again because it's like you see it everywhere like you've fucking seen it a million times you've seen pictures of it a million times when i saw the eiffel tower i was like okay like i fucking shrugged like it was like okay there's that thing that i fucking seen a million times so fuck the pyramids you didn't take a picture of uh, fucking, like, you holding the tip of it or whatever? No, you know? I don't give a shit about that fucking thing. <laughs> so stupid. You know what? I, wa- I want to see the... I really fuck with the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> um, I've seen that. I went uh, on a road trip to go see that with my parents. It is way smaller than you think. Oh, no. I want to see that shit because it's, like, it fascinates me, dude. The like, coolest thing about that is you could see, like, the... um like where homeboy who made it like the artist like he yeah. lived in the fucking mountain for a long time so you could see his cave and shit and like he lived in george washington's nose <laughs> <laughs> that's the coolest thing about that <laughs> let me tell you i also like i i do fuck with monuments in general like there's a lot of like weird russian ones that i want to see you that are, are just like c- creepy Okay, so it's 1991, and at the U.S. Championships that year, Tanya lands a fucking triple axel, and she becomes the first American woman to land the triple axel in competition, and the second woman in general. This is, like, fucking, like, this is gigantic. Yes. Like, this is, like, fucking, like, world record level type shit. Like, this is crazy that she did this, right? Yeah, exactly. This is, like, uh, you know we landed on the moon and shit right like, this, like, is, this is like fucking huge that she yeah. did this in i tanya they really break down the mechanics of the triple axle and why it's so amazing and i still kind of don't get exactly what's happening i just see like <laughs> hella spins in there i know <laughs> me too what about now do can people do it now like yeah people do it okay yeah after that she just kind of like broke through that barrier you know and then yeah after, after that people started doing it that's cool I always kind of forget that I really like figure skating. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and the, that's the only good part of the fucking Winter the Olympics. The Winter Olympics? Yeah, I, who gives a shit about anything else? 
I know there's something else in the Winter Olympics that I like. I like snowboarding, like the mm. not like the speed ones, but like the tricks. I'm like, I could give her fucking take it or leave it. I don't give a shit. Figure skating is where it's at. Yeah, that's true. So I remember every four years during the Olympics, pretty much, but I still don't understand the technical parts. <laughs> but then I'll be like, uh, I'll be like, that double sow cow was fucking trash. She should have done a single <laughs> into a double axle instead. What a fucking disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you see present day Tanya talk about the triple axel, it's legit heartbreaking because you yeah. see you see how proud she is. Yeah. And you could tell that this was a if not the high point in her life. Yeah. That's it, right? She never that's it. achieved that again. That that's it. It's all downhill from there. That's fucking so sad. The moment she landed the triple axel, her whole world changed. She had suddenly tapped into her potential and her future seemed bright as fuck. And the rest of her life could have been completely different, but she fucked it up. Right. So the reason Tanya was able to land the triple was because she wasn't built like the other s- skaters. She was Right, she was thick. She was thick, T H I C C C. I mean, she actually had some muscles and some mass to her, kind of like how Serena Williams really changed the game as far as how women in tennis's body can look. Right. Also, so, the um, Misty Copeland, the black ballerina. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's muscular, and she, so she's, like, way better. She's muscular, but she's not buff. She's well, still, no, like, Misty she, Copeland is, like, lean. Yeah, she's still dainty, but not, yeah. not like, most ballerinas. That, right, exactly. She totally changed the game. Right. Does she Is she still prima ballerina, or did she retire, or whatever? No, she retired. She doesn't okay. do... I think she teaches now and stuff. Yeah. She's real pretty, too. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so so Tanya was athletic in a sport where everyone else was like these dainty little butterflies. Right. She really was a super gifted athlete through and through. Like, she was strong as fuck, so she could jump higher and spin faster and skate faster than all the other ladies. Tanya was easily one of the best skaters in the country, and she finished second at the 1991 World Championships. That's crazy. So she was certainly one of the best in the world, but she was from the wrong side of the tracks and she didn't look like the other girls. So they didn't want her. They didn't want that bitch. Yeah. And because like, yes, skating takes hella athleticism, but there's this other part to it that's almost like being in a pageant, you know, the, right, co- the, yes. the costumes, the presentation, all of that. Yeah. And Tanya didn't know how or didn't want to play that game. And she didn't have the money to like, True. She so couldn't put into the at costumes that, that the other girls did. Yeah. Like every time you see her makeup, it's all fucked. Oh, it's super <laughs> fucked, dude. Yeah, it's all fucking run- ratchet and shit. <laughs> dude, she'd skate to like Leonard Skinner and ZZ yeah. Top and shit. Her makeup was like 78% blue eyeshadow. Yes. Like- <laughs> and like bright fucking pink blush. Yes. And she loved the fucking scrunchie. Yeah. This bitch loved scrunchies. <laughs> scrunchies made up like 47% of her personality. <laughs> she had a fucking closet full of scrunchies. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she did when she started making money she was yeah like, she invested in scrunchies <laughs> yeah closet see a she needed closet. real friends she could have capitalized <laughs> on this shit we could have made a whole Ooh. line of fucking tanya harding scrunchies yes like in the colors of her favorite like eyeshadows yes <laughs> Leonard yeah. skinner one yeah <laughs> one in the color of the brandy that her mom drank <laughs> <laughs> And okay, and she couldn't afford the costume, so she made them herself. Right. So her scores were never quite what she thought she should be getting. And Ta- she was fucking good. She was fucking great. And Tanya thought that that wasn't fair. But once she hit the triple axel, they almost had to start giving her higher scores. And at least her technical scores started going up. So she had the powers that be of the skating world fucking shook. Yeah. They were starting to get nervous that Tanya was about to become the face of American figure skating. Fuck them, dude. Yeah, they're you little, should like, be so fucking lucky. That girl, she was right. badass, and she's breaking barriers. Like, look at her. Yeah, and fuck yeah. you guys, just because she doesn't fit your little mold. And shouldn't they want more people to try their sport and to participate in their sport? No, May, because they're gonna <laughs> muddy it. Yeah, yeah. We don't want they these all, fucking they want, peasants. They also want sep. These are the people that want separate fucking water fountains. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that's true. Fucking assholes. Dude, there's this one skater. Uh, 
Surya Bonali, she's French. And I can't remember if it was like a podcast or like an NPR thing or something, but I heard her tell her story earlier this year and she had kind of like a similar problem because she's in black. France. Yeah. Or uh, around the world. Okay. She's an international skater uh-huh. um, because she's black. So, yeah, so she was want her. Well, she wasn't built like the other girls. She was like thick for real. She, she's built like Serena. Yeah. And they never quite gave her the scores that a lot of people thought that she deserved because she wasn't like they kept telling her like she's not graceful or whatever. Yeah. Uh, even though she was actually like crushing crazy jumps and shit. And a lot of the analysts, the skating analysts, they acknowledged that it was probably in part or uh, like or it had a lot to do with racism in her oh, yeah. case. Sh- it rhymes with schmacism. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So at the at the 98 Olympics, uh, Surya wasn't getting the scores like she she should have you know based on what she was doing she should have been on the podium for sure but she was like hella low um in the rankings that she was like in 10th place after her first uh her first program that's so so she was kind of like well fuck it when she went out to do her second program yeah and she busted out a backflip and landed on one foot which was fucking hella illegal oh my god she's a fucking badass dude that's amazing. That's so fucking scary. <laughs> She's a boss. Everyone who saw it was like speechless because that yeah. shit is scary. It's so fucking dangerous. Fuck yeah. But she's like, fuck you guys. I might as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. So at the time, Christy Yamaguchi was widely considered to be the face of American skating. Mm-hmm. But Christy retired, you know, because she was old as fuck. I want to say she was like 16. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> it's time to go bear children and and live in your cave (laughs) live in george washington's nose (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay so uh the next in line the quote-unquote next in line was nancy kerrigan right nancy was like what tanya could have been under slightly different circumstances right Nancy grew up in a very working class, borderline poor family. Her dad worked three jobs to pay for her lessons growing up. And Tanya says that because of this, she and Nancy were actually friends while they competed on the circuit. They would kick it and like drink and shit. But the difference was that Nancy knew how to play the fucking game. Yeah. Like she had Vera Wang made her costumes and shit. Yeah, come on. (laughs) Also, Nancy was pretty. So she like she projected this sort of like aura of class like she was faking it pretty much, you know? Yeah, for sure. She fucking like you said, played the game. Yeah. And she had the total pretty privilege on her on her side, you know. But she partied with Tanya. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I would have so, loved to party with Tanya Harding. Dude, I wish that I Tanya had more of that. Imagine getting fucked up with her and then going like, "Come on Tanya, do a triple axel real quick." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know she would do it <laughs> hand me my lucky scrunchie <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah hell yeah she would do it you know they broke into like the the skating rinks and skated at night and shit i bet they did yeah did you hear about that dude who died in echo park lake this week yeah and i saw them like looking for him low-key on one of like those little paddle fucking boats yeah, that they rent out yeah 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 and i kept thinking why don't they just fucking drain the lake but it must be so expensive, but it's bullshit. But it's, I mean, drain it to find a dead body? Yeah. Nah, because they found it. just took them a few hours. Imagine I how know, many. I know, but d- now that water, like dead body has been in that water and shit. Uh, how many dead bodies do you think are in there still that we don't know uh, about? Like, I'm, know, su- I'm surprised they didn't find like other ones. Don't forget, <laughs> Echo Park was just recently gentrified. That shit was <laughs> the fucking hood up until like fucking five years ago. Like, I truly don't want to know what they'll find in MacArthur Park. Like, if oh, it was. Hell no. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> There's so hella bodies many in there. <laughs> false green cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So. So who are we talking about? Oh, Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> so <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> so Nancy finished third behind Christy and Tanya at the 1991 World Championship, uh, which was crazy because then we we had the three Americans swept it, which was pretty dope. That's badass. Yeah. yeah. So really, now that Christy retired, Tanya and Nancy are the two top skaters in the country. Wow. So after 1991, Tanya had trouble landing the triple axel. It just, it wasn't there anymore. 
Because she was partying. In because Indonesia, it, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and because of this, Tanya's score started dropping again. Uh-oh. In 1992, she finished sixth at the World Championships and things started falling apart for her. Wow. And Tanya got hella out of shape. Like, she got, like, no, she wasn't fat because she was still an athlete. But, you know, like, she was just, she was yeah. in bad fucking shape. You have to be very shape. disciplined to be a professional athlete. Yeah. Like, you can't be, like, a normal healthy person you have to be like extra healthy yeah exactly if like if she was working out fucking every single day and then took like you know a month off or something you know she's fucked yeah she's fucked yeah so she showed up to the 1992 olympics in france late (laughs) and mad out of shape my bad (laughs) what i I couldn't find the right scrunchie (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you these french scrunchies just won't cut it oh she was like oh the olympics are in france my bad i to go see the eiffel tower <laughs> so she didn't really skate well at the olympics and she finished fourth yeah in still, what st- still pretty fucking good well it kind of i'll tell you why it kind of sucked that okay. she finished fourth um so and what would become a pattern for Tanya, she swore that it wasn't her fault. It was everybody and everything's fault but her own. This time, she blamed her blade because it had allegedly fallen off a day or two before she was supposed to start competing. And when they put it back, she says that they put it on slightly off center so all of her landings were off. Is this the one where she has her foot up on the judge's table? No. Oh, okay, my bad. That's what I'm saying. Like, she just, like fucking excuses that's another occasion we'll get to that one yeah um yeah so anyway she so winning a medal at the olympics really sets a skater up basically for life so the fact that she came so close it really devastated her because right. it, it it was like she almost had it you know it was like yeah. with, within ring or within reach and she couldn't she couldn't oh my god you'll think about that forever yeah and also, it really limited her potential future earnings and opportunities. Yeah, sponsors and shit. Exactly. So, not that people were were tripping all over themselves to try to sponsor Tanya because, like, you know, cause yeah, she's trash. Because she's trash. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so she had to start waitressing. In a sort of surprise move, the Olympic Committee decided to start staggering the Winter and Summer Olympics. So, there was actually going to be another Olympics in 1994. Which yeah. meant which meant that Tanya actually had one last shot because she'd be about twenty three during those games. Perfect. So she starts putting in work. Like she works out all the time. She's always on that ice. She takes ballet and shit. And her coach Diane says, No more of your ZZ top bullshit. No more of your fucking blue eyeshadow. If we're gonna do this, we're gonna fucking do it right. We're gonna fucking Nancy Kerrigan this shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but she still isn't scoring what she feels she should be scoring. So she confronts some judges and they pretty much let her know off the record, of course, that it isn't just her skating. It's her whole deal. And they don't want to reward all of that, you know? Right. They just don't like her. The judge was like, first of all, what the fuck are you wearing? And she was yeah. she was like, if you want to give me $5,000 for a skating costume, then you can talk about my outfit until then. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's not fair. In 1993, Tanya skated like shit basically all season and at the U.S. championships. So she didn't even qualify for the world team. Wow. Meanwhile, a girl Nancy is doing great. She's kicking butt at competitions. She was actually the 1993 national champion. And she had sponsorships with Reebok, Campbell Soup, Fuck. Evian, and Revlon. Like, I mean. Damn, look Revlon? At that, look at that portfolio right there. Yeah. I mean, I don't fuck with Reebok, but Revlon and Campbell's Soup. <laughs> hey, Loki, have you been seeing those Reebok commercials, those, those new ones for their new, like, line of clothes? They look nice. Yeah. I only uh, look at the, like, sportswear for, like, running shoes, and I never liked Reebok running shoes, so. <laughs> Reebok, their shoes weren't really for like sports right i it's feel like, just like it's for, just like uh for look for streetwear streetwear yeah, that's what it is yeah i think yeah so. i don't I, wear i don't wear that i think actually i think maybe like in 90s nba they might have had reeboks that people wore yeah 
So it's before the 1994 Olympics in Lillehammer, and the best American skaters are trying to qualify, but they're only taking the top two from nationals. Damn. On January 6th, the day before the national championship, Nancy was attacked after a practice session at a Detroit arena. A man, later identified as Shane Stant, hit her in her right knee, which was her landing leg, with a police baton. Jesus Christ. Shane tries to run away but finds the exit doors locked and ends up running through a glass door. <laughs> like in the cartoon. <laughs> what an idiot. Meanwhile, Nancy's on the ground and there's infamously video of her on the ground crying and screaming, Why? Why? Yeah. It's it's so fucked up. I can't it's- imagine how horrifying that must have been for her. Yeah, like, it's really fucked up. I mean, like all everything aside, like Nancy didn't have anything to do with Tanya's shit, you know? Right, exactly. She's just going about her own personal business, you know? Yeah, like, trying to do her best to make it in this fucking field. Like, yeah. she, didn't, she never, like, or I mean, at least we don't know, but she never, like, fucking talked bad about Tanya or anything. No, right? she didn't. And you know that Tanya, Tanya talks shit all the time. So if that were true, Tanya would have said something. <laughs> Yeah, she, she would have sure. she would have been very quick to be like, oh, she said this to me that one time or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, like I I mean, aside from the pain, like I bet you imagine that the thing you've been working towards your whole life, like literally since you're eight years old is gone yeah, that's in it. that instant. It's over. Right. Yeah. So I feel so fucking bad for her. Yeah, that shit's horrible. So Nancy's dad picks her up, picks her up and carries her into the medical facility. My dad could never carry me, dude. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> so is my dad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> my dad could never carry me, man. Are you fucking kidding me? It's because they're old, dude. Who's going to carry us if something like that happened to us? Well, Hoel could carry me. I don't, you're on your own. <laughs> I'm on my own. That's true. <laughs> Shit. I'll have Hoel carry you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Jesus, where's Jesus at? <laughs> he, he's got his own wife now. <laughs> oh, that's true. He, you're only allowed to carry your own wife. <laughs> Under and, your his do- and your daughter. <laughs> and your handmaid. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, you know what I was going to say? I bet your mom would fucking carry you. <laughs> Shit, my mom could never. My mom would be like, get up. <laughs> You're so dramatic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, th- these pictures of Nancy Kerrigan are fucked up. Oh, when she's like screaming? Yeah, yeah. She's like all fucking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I know. That's so fucked up. So, Tanya claims she was sleeping when someone called her and told her what was happening. She had a practice later that day, and she says that she was terrified that something like that could happen to her. Right. She, she says that her coach Diane was like, if you don't fucking focus, there's no way you're going to be able to skate. So Tanya is immediately suspect number one because she's the only one that would have anything to really gain, you know? Right. The Olympics are just six weeks away. Nancy can't skate at the national championship, and so Tanya wins the national championship. Nancy technically shouldn't be able to make the Olympic team, but she says she'll be ready and the committee votes and says that she deserves to go. Because they fucking love her. Because they love that bitch. And also, yeah. I, she was like... She, she was had, great. She was great. Like, more, more than likely, she was going to finish in first place. For sure, for sure. So then, then poor little baby Michelle Kwan, she can't, she can't go even though she came in second. Like, Aww. <laughs> it's all right, you get it. You'll get there, Michelle. You'll Kwan. get there. Shout out to Michelle Kwan. She was. Yeah. So, she was. So, I saw a video of her. Like during this, she was so cute. She must have been like I don't know, like twelve or something. Thirteen. You think she like, was hype when Nancy <laughs> Carey got, her, got her leg fucked up? You think she was like, oh shit, I'm gonna get to go now. She tipped her scrunchie at Tanya. <laughs> So by now, the press and the world is fucking salivating. There's so much drama surrounding women's figure skating that everyone is like, fuck yeah. The the Olympics are going to be lit. Lit. So reporters are all over Tanya asking her questions. And she starts talking shit. She's like, it feels good to be the national champion, but it's not going to feel real until I beat Nancy and I'm going to whip her butt. Fuck. Tanya. 
Just I know, like, like do you re- just shut up? Just shut up. And the thing is, like, she, like, she. I mean, no, like, I love her and everything, but she's a little bit stupid. Her and her man, like, they're all stupid. They're all fucking dumb. Just put your yes. head down. Put your scrunchie up. Like, just yes. do it. Skate by yourself, dude. Just the way this whole shit went down, like. Who the fuck would have something against Nancy Kerrigan? Yes. How did you think you were going to get away with this? Fucking America's sweetheart. Yes. You know, they they would move heaven and earth to try to find who hurt this white girl. Fuck yeah. (laughs) Okay. And also the FBI is on the case and they're trying to figure out who the fuck is responsible for all this, which is like, is it weird that the FBI is involved? Like it's, it's an assault. No, because like we said, it's a little white girl. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So they talked to Tanya and Jeff right after the national championship in Detroit. When the press asked her about it, Tanya says that she isn't worried and she knows uh, they're doing a thorough investigation to try to find the man who did this. Ooh. In the background of all of this, Tanya now has a bodyguard. This Winnie the Pooh with fetal alcohol syndrome looking motherfucker named Sean Eckhart. He's Jeff's friend. I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> And Sean, Sean started bragging to anyone who would listen that he planned the hit on Nancy after being hired by Jeff. He claims that he's a counterterrorism expert and trained in espionage and all kinds of shit. He's like a real life Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, like there's something wrong with him, right? Yeah, there's something wrong with him. For sure. All right. Uh, you know what's wrong with him? What? He's dead. He de- <laughs> he's dead. I mean. He's dead, me? Yeah, he's dead. Oh, shit. How do you spell his name? Uh, S-H-A-W-N. E C K A R D T. All right, it came up. Oh shit, he died. Yeah, he died. He did. From what? Um, fetal oh, he al- was forty. <laughs> fetal alcohol syndrome. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he died of. It says unknown causes. I think. Oh wow. So someone sent an anonymous letter to a local news station in Portland implicating everyone involved. So the reporter calls Tanya to tell her about it, and Tanya asks the reporter to fax it to her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shout out to Faxes. Yeah. <laughs> so the reporter refuses and asks for an interview if she wants to read the letter. This interview is nuts. Yeah. Jeff is behind the reporter the whole time, just like fucking glaring at Tanya, like in the frame. It's so weird that they would have framed it that way for him to be sitting behind her. And Tanya looks over at him before she answers a lot of the questions. And Jeff was apparently unhappy with some of her answers because he hits her as soon as they get into the car after. (gasps) After this, Tanya says she starts to put the pieces together. There's an FBI agent in the documentary that says Sean folded, quote, like a cheap accordion. Wow. (laughs) So Sean goes to the FBI and admits that Jeff hired him and that he contracted his associates to head over to Nancy's hometown in Massachusetts to carry out the hit. Then, when they found out that Nancy had already left to Detroit for the competition, they took a Greyhound for 20 hours and finally found her. They Jesus. left. <laughs> they, so they were fucking like on a fucking mission. Right. So they left a, a trail of phone, bank, and credit card records the whole fucking way. Oh, my God. These are the absolute dumb, <laughs> dumbest people you could have gotten to do this shit. That's amazing. It's, oh, it's so bad. Yeah. So the only question is, was was Tanya in on it? Yeah. Okay. So we're six weeks from the Olympics. And Nancy, thankfully, isn't as badly injured as she could have been. Where did they hit her at? Exactly. Right above her knee. Above her knee. Yeah. Right above her right knee. Oh, that's not so bad. So like the... um, I think like Achilles would have been... Oh, hit her Achilles? Yeah. yeah she would have been fucking done. Yeah, but she had her skates on, you know, so it's almost like protected. True, true. They used to hit her in an unprotected place. So she basically has uh, what amounts to a really bad bone bruise on her on her landing leg, but no torn ligaments or anything like that. And she's a fucking pro, so she's going to work through it. Exactly. So r- regardless, doctors are skeptical about whether or not she can go to the Olympics, but she's determined. So they say if she's going to even try to do this, she's forbidden from getting on the ice for four weeks. So oh, th- that shit. would only leave two weeks of ice time before the Olympics. Oh, my God. Her sports psychologist says she refused to do trauma work because she didn't want to feel like a victim. She just wanted to get her head back in the game. 
fuck. She's a boss. Dude, she's a fucking boss. She's a pro. Yeah. So Tanya talks to the FBI again and this time spills the beans. On January 27th, she holds a press conference detailing what she told the FBI and she denies her own involvement but throws Jeff under the bus. Yeah, fuck Bethel anyways. Yeah, fuck him. Piece of shit. Abuser. Garbage. Mm -hmm. He changed his name. By the way, he changed his name to Jeff Stone. Just oh, okay. Put, I'm just putting that out there. Just in case you want to Google that for me. <laughs> like me right now. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. She says that she's sorry that Nancy was attacked, but that the only thing she's guilty of is not reporting the crime immediately after the fact when she realized that Jeff had been responsible. She says in the state of Oregon that the act of concealing criminal knowledge is not a crime. So now it's out. Tanya has implicated herself. Right. Obviously, she's going to minimize her involvement, but she's certainly more involved than she initially disclosed. Uh huh. Tanya practices at a rink that's in the middle of a shopping mall, like we said earlier, the same rink she's been practicing at since she was fucking three years old. That's crazy. Um, which is not the best when what was already this huge media circus only gets bigger. Yeah. Because like she's she's pretty much practicing in public, whereas like Nancy could practice like at a private, you know, a private right. rink. Right. So, I mean, the story had everything. Sports, drama, class, beauty, crime, gender. Vera Wang. Everything. <laughs> yeah, Vera Wang. Scratchies. Olympics. <laughs> fucking everything. Campbell's soup. Oh, hell yeah. Revlon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, basically, it was impossible for Tanya to train in the midst of all of that. The reporters would do fucked up shit to her. Like they would let the air out of her tires and have her truck towed. So it would force her to come out just so that they could get a picture of yell questions at her. Oh, damn. On February 1st, Jeff flips on Tanya. He said that she was in on it from the beginning. He, what a dick. he and the other guys all plead guilty to various crimes, including racketeering, conspiracy and assault and agreed to give testimony on everyone involved, including Tanya, of course. And they all get around 18 months in prison. Some serve a little bit less, some even less. But yeah, they all get sentenced to around 18 where, months. Where are they sentenced? In Oregon? Yeah, in Oregon. All right. The Olympic Committee has to decide if Tanya should be allowed to go to the Olympics because she hasn't had her day in court yet. And as we know, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yep. Um, but they don't want her to compete. And they say they have probable cause to at least assume that she violated the code of ethics. So she sues them for $10 million, and as part of the settlement, she's allowed to skate on the team and go to the Olympics. Wow. Also around this time, it came out that Tanya called Massachusetts to find out Nancy's practice schedule before the attack. <gasps> the FBI found a scrap of paper in Tanya's trash in her handwriting with the name of Nancy's practice rink and the times written on it. Jesus. So that's it, right? Like that's yeah, that's it. That's yeah. the that's the fucking smoking gun right there. She fucking you. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no other reason for her to seek out that information if not for this fucking scheme. Right. So, cut to the Olympics. Now the whole fucking world is following this story, and Tanya does an interview with Connie Chung while in Lillehammer. And when Con when Connie keeps pressing her about her involvement in the crime, she does the classic "I'm done." takes off her mic and like walks out <laughs> this, <laughs> this interview is over <laughs> connie says that she was actually kind of impressed by tanya's ability to answer and not answer the questions that she wanted she said that she felt like tanya was like a seasoned politician oh wow dude i could never be on a re on a reality show because i've never said the words i'm done and walked away from someone <laughs> i feel like i see that like on literally every episode of Everyone. every of every reality show i've ever seen True. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so Nancy and Tanya had to practice together on the same ice. And in a little arena meant to fit a couple hundred people at most, there were thousands of people from the media there. Fuck. <laughs> Alas, there wasn't a showdown on the ice that day. But in a motherfucking boss move, Nancy wore the same white skating outfit she wore on the day she was attacked. Damn. Psycho Come at me, bitch. Psychological warfare, yo. Yeah. Dude, if you like what That's a some classy <laughs> classy shit shit talking right there. I love that shit. Like she yeah. she was like if you're going to come at me best not miss, bitch. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, like that's that's really when I'm sold on Nancy. 
Yeah, that's pretty tight. Okay. So Tanya says that she apologized that day in the locker room to Nancy's face for the for the behavior of the people around her. Mm-hmm. But she says that Nancy blew her off and acted like she was above her. Tanya's exact words were, I shit you not, quote, that's rude. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's fucking fresh coming from you, bitch. Are you kidding me, Nancy? That's fu- <laughs> no, Tanya. <laughs> oh, my bad. Are yeah. you kidding me, Tanya? Yeah, dude. That's that's Is fucking rude, kidding? dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Tanya was pissed about the narrative that was playing out in the media. She, yeah, because she doesn't like this shit. Right. She said that they were trying to spin things so that, quote, She's a princess, and I'm a pile of crap. Oh. <laughs> Which, I mean, there is, there's a lot going on. I bet you could teach a college, a college class on, like, how we treat women in the media and, like... How the media does that. Yeah, around this story. Like, it's, there's a lot of dynamics going on. But at, at the end of the day, like, girl, take, yeah. res- take responsibility for what you did. Yeah, you fucked up. Like, I'm sure it's not fair, like, how they dragged her. But still, it was not okay what right. you did. And especially now, like, especially since I, Tanya came out, I think, we have a lot more context. We know, like, what her childhood was like. We know that Jeff was abusive. We know, like... It sucks. It sucks. But yeah, it's awful. But she did. She, ugh, she, there was no reason for her to do what she did. Right. Okay. And now the competition. The final was the most watched Olympic program in history and still is to this day. That's so crazy. It was like a Super Bowl, like Super Bowl numbers. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Nancy fucking nails her short program. Damn. And after after her short program, she's in first place. I highly suggest it, if you guys can, it's because it doesn't take that much time. Like, look up the YouTube videos and watch like these competitions because there's a lot going on and like you, the just the stories of their faces. Like, oh god, watch it; it's so good. Yeah. Okay. So Tanya fucks up her short program. Oh my god! And she winds up in tenth. Oh no! So. Next up, you know, cut to like a day or two later or whatever, um, the long program. Tanya doesn't come to the ice because the laces on her skate are allegedly fucked up. Right, right, right. This is what you were talking about. Yeah, where yeah. she has her shoe up on the judge's table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And again, nothing is ever Tanya's fault. Yeah, I hate that. What is that? I don't, I don't You're like that. You're always the victim? Yeah, she's always the victim. She's always yeah. deflecting. It's always, oh, poor me. Something's happening to me. Like, yeah. yeah it's never her. Mm-hmm. P.S. This whole last 20 or 30 minutes or, or so of I, Tanya, Margot Robbie is acting. She is yeah. so good. Yeah, she does really well. Yeah. Okay. Who won the Oscar? Because um, she was nominated. She was nominated. Frances McDormand. Frances McDormand, best actor. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah uh, she I did. Won I for did. Three billboards. I did not like that movie. Yeah. Okay. So Tanya starts the program, and uh, she stops after bailing on her first jump. She's crying and shit. She skates over to the judges' table to show them her skates, and the judges surprisingly let her start over. So she ultimately fucks up the long program too and finishes in eighth place. She wow. she didn't do the triple axel. Wow. Then Nancy fucking kills. She's going for the goddamn gold. Fuck yeah. But Oksana Bayul wins the gold though. What? She, she was like this little teenager who came out of fucking nowhere. Oksana was my favorite skater in the 90s. So <laughs> as much as I would have liked like the fairy tale ending of like Nancy winning gold, I fuck with Oksana. So I'm not like particularly mad at it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Oksana came in and like swooped that shit up. And they say that the decision was political. Like no one wanted to reward anyone involved in what had become this fucking shit show. It's fucking crazy. That sucks because look at everything she's been through, though. Nancy. Yeah, she deserves it. Yeah. Nancy was caught on camera mad that Oksana was taking too long to reapply her makeup. She was, oh, <laughs> she was talking shit and said something like, uh, why is she taking so long? She's just going to cry it all off anyway. Oh! So, so that kind of started the sort of chain reaction where there was a little bit of a backlash against Nancy, which wow, I feel bad for her because like, 
she just had to go through all this shit, you know? Yeah, like, let her talk a little just, bit of shit. Just, Who cares? Just let her vent. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, fuck. She just did something incredible. But Yeah. But whatever. And, and like, I think it was either later that year or, like, the next year or something. Like, she was at, on, like, a float in a parade in Disneyland or something. <laughs> and they, they caught her on a hot mic saying something, like, talking to Mickey Mouse and saying, like, is this the corniest shit you have ever seen in oh. your life? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay like nancy <laughs> kerrigan more and more i like campbell soup yeah let's do this shit yeah. okay so present day tanya talks shit about this saying quote you won a silver medal and now you're whining because you didn't win the gold i don't think that's right shut the fuck up you would have been doing this you would have been doing it worse worse, worse. You- yeah yeah this bitch was already crying because of her fucking shoelace. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tanya pled guilty to hindering prosecution and was sentenced to three years probation and 160 grand in fines and fees and 500 hours of community service. Wow. Phil Knight, the CEO of Nike, donated $25,000 toward her legal fees. Oh, that's nice. Well, but why? Oh, because he's from Oregon. I just realized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I kept thinking, like, why would he want to do that? Okay. She was stripped of her 1993 national championship and not allowed to compete ever again. That's that's crazy that's to me. That's fucked because, like, it, they she didn't say this in real life, but Margot Robbie says this in I, Tanya, when she's talking to the judge. She's like, this is a life sentence yeah she was like send me to jail send me to jail for 18 months like everybody else and seriously because you're giving me a life sentence she had no skills you know like that was it that was her whole she's three years old skating like that's it for her it's fucked but so messed up i mean they're trying to teach her a teach a lesson yeah yeah true okay so she of course divorced jeff and later claimed that he that she had wanted to tell the FBI immediately when she find when she found out about everything, but that Jeff had threatened her at gunpoint, and he and some other goons threatened to rape her if she said anything. Oh my God! She also later claimed to have been kidnapped at some point. So Ta- Tanya is like fucking all over the place. Yeah, she's hot sauce. <laughs> In September of 1994, Penthouse released Tanya and Jeff's 35 minute sex tape. <laughs> oh yeah i, I didn't, forgot about i didn't know that. this i didn't know this at all i forgot about that i wonder if this is one of the first celebrity sex tapes i wonder did she get oh uh, i'm gonna investigate did she, did she get paid off it i don't think uh, no i don't think so oh no yeah so um tanya had dropped out of school to skate so she didn't have any skills to speak of yeah. Meanwhile, Nancy rode the wave of skating's increased popularity after this incident, and she made millions. Of course. Nancy was inducted into the figure hating. Figure hating. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Tanya was inducted. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> we need to have that. <laughs> the, the figure, figure hating Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame. <laughs> Nancy was inducted into the Figure Skating Hall of Fame in 2014. Good for you, Nancy. I stand for yeah. Nancy now, dude. Yeah, okay. me too. I like I like that bitch. <laughs> Tanya became a wrestler, a pro boxer, yeah. a mechanic, a landscaper, and television personality. She mm. had a band, the Golden Blades, but they got Aww. booed off stage during their first and only performance. Aww. In 2007, on the campaign trail, Barack Obama joked, Folks said there's no way Obama has a chance. Unless he goes and kneecaps the person ahead of us. Does it, Tanya Harding? (laughs) God bless you, (laughs) President Obama. (laughs) She got married a couple more times and has a young son. She seems she seems happy. She seems content in her life. Uh, She still skates several times a week, but she still can't hit the triple axle. Aww. And that story of Tanya Harding. Damn, good job, man. That shit's fucking crazy. The first inductee into the figure hating Hall of Fame. The figure hating <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> now you can yell, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> man, that's cr- so wild. So, like, I mean, 
it's settled, Who right? Like thought that you could get all that drama out of a figure skater, dude. Yeah, right. You know why? Because they're because they're trashy. Because she's trashy. <laughs> yeah, she was ghetto. Yeah, D- she did it right. Like from the from the oh, job. Oh, for sure. No, she knew for sure. You know. And I, Tanya, they try to say like um, that she w- she wanted it to be like a they wanted to send her threatening letters or something. Like they that's w- the way they paid it out in the movie. Yeah. yeah. That Jeff and Tanya like conspired to send paid a thousand dollars to these dudes and like conspired to uh, to have them send this death threat. But in what world does a death threat cost a thousand dollars? And in like the nineties, in the nineties, right? that you send a letter, yeah. you send a fucking letter, a thousand dollars, really? Like you can't just pen that shit yourself? Yeah, no, oh. no, she had something to do with it. Yeah, D- definitely more than she le- leads on, right? And it's just yeah. fucked because like. If anybody knows what other athletes go through, would be her, yeah, you know, like exactly like a fellow athlete. Yeah, don't do that to her. You don't think she sacrificed just as much as you have? Like, yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, no. <sighs> Shady ass Tanya Harding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Do, how do you feel about her being like at the Golden Globes this year and shit? No, I don't know. I thought that was weird too. They were like all about her. Because it kind of gives her vindication yes. when this shit wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. I don't mind them telling her story. Like I don't mind me either. I don't mind the movie, and I don't know, maybe her going to the premiere or whatever. Make make your money off of your story, I guess. Like yeah, but like you don't need to celebrate. She shouldn't have been sitting front row at the Golden Globes. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> you think Nancy Kerrigan was fucked up at her house watching it <laughs> on on Chardonnay? Hell yeah. Yeah. Chardonnay yeah. and Campbell's soup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that you <laughs> no nah, she got millions she's not worried about tanya true true she, she could buy a ticket to the golden globes if she wanted to yep true francis mcdormand should have invited a uh, fucking oh my god Nancy. that would have been gangster <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so fucking sick and she should have showed up in that white outfit in again. that white outfit <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes may that would have been amazing <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to us, guys. That was fun. We're done. <laughs> We're done. I'm pulling off my. I'm putting my my mic away. <laughs> Subscribe to us on <laughs> iTunes. Leave your girls a review. Uh, Hit us up on social media. Listen to our playlist, our pre-party playlist, and look out for the afternoon delight episode coming on Monday. Bye. Bye. However, whatever with your helmet. And when we were down 20 points in the summer, all the pundits and all the smart folks, they were saying, okay, his only chance now, he's got a kneecapper. He's got to do a Tanya Harding on the front runner.